So trying out the uh, Ico uh, 430D oscilloscope that I just got. Um, I powered it on. I've turned on the uh, power switch. The pot for the intense D seems a little bit weird. It's got some dead spots in it, but we can turn it to a spot where it is working. Uh, the focus control seems to work as it should. Uh, vertical position is good. Horizontal position seems good. Uh, vertical gain, I've currently got this hooked up to my uh, Siglent uh, frequency generator. So we can see vertical gain is, is working as it should. Uh, the problem is horizontal gain, which we, I mean, we can go from almost nothing to slightly more than nothing. If this is all the way up, that Listed you pattern should really fill fill the uh, the whole CRT and it doesn't. So I think I think there's something wrong with the uh, horizontal gain circuit. So it does have uh, this uh, sweep circuit does seem to work, but again, so we're sweeping at about 10 hertz. You know, we're still having this problem with a uh, horizontal gain. That we can only get up to about a tenth of a division. Now as we go up higher more interesting things happen. Um, this is uh, sweeping at 100 hertz. Now to kilohertz we're starting to actually get some horizontal gain and at uh, 10 kilohertz horizontal gain control is working really well. We can bring this all the way up to 100 kilohertz now look at that, we've got all kinds of horizontal gain. But going back to the line in, and we don't have a whole lot. The sync button, that's actually vertical attenuation, that doesn't do a whole lot there. So what I think is going on, at least this is my hypothesis, looking at the uh, horizontal um, amplifiers, this uh, section of the schematic down here and there's this capacitor this uh, C23 it's a 20 microfarad uh, 50 volt capacitor and it's an electrolytic and I have to wonder if that's bad that's right on the input path going to the uh, the horizontal uh, gain control and uh, you know if that capacitor started to go, go sour it could explain why we're getting uh, why we're getting hor decent horizontal gain at high frequencies but crappy horizontal gain at uh, low frequencies. So I might try replacing that just to see what... Uh... So I replaced this uh, 20 microfarad uh, old electrolytic capacitor. It was uh, it hooks up to the uh, horizontal gain potentiometer. That's my theory is that's the one that the problem is. Um, just because it's an electrolytic and they tend to go out. I didn't have a 50 volt capacitor on hand, so I did put in a 22 microfarad, uh, 250 volt. It's this big one here, nice modern cap, and we'll try this out and see what happens. Turn on the oscilloscope. Nothing yet. Uh, there's our green dot. Still doesn't look any. Oh, there. Look. Uh, oh, now we got a line. That's what we wanted to see was a, a horizontal line. The uh, horizontal gain control is fixed. That's all it was was that silly capacitor. Let's try and, yeah, there's 10 hertz, 100 hertz. Oops, let me move that down. 10 hertz, 100 hertz, kilohertz. 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, and the 60 hertz uh, line. Well, nice. That turned out to be a pretty easy, uh, pretty easy fix. Let's turn on the uh, the frequency generator and see what happens.
English. I'll set uh, to 60 Hertz. And yeah, we've got a nice uh, round uh, Lissajou pattern of some sort. It's like the phasing between the two is not uh, not exactly perfect. This is operating off of the uh, line phase where that is generating a 60 hertz phase itself. Um, put it there's a 10 hertz. Yeah, so there we've got our. 60 hertz wave. Let's try uh, one kilohertz. Oh, here, let's go down here. There, now if we just set the sweep to match our input signal, there is our one kilohertz sine wave. So there's our one kilohertz. Let's see what happens if I change it to uh, 10 kilohertz. Yeah, there's a 10 kilohertz wave. How about a uh, five kilohertz. All right. Then if we go to, uh, how about a uh, square wave? There's a square wave. Uh, ramp. All right. Let's try some of the other ranges on here. So that was the, uh, let's try doing a 500 hertz wave. Then go down here into the uh, 100 to uh, 10. There, now we're just playing a 500 hertz wave. Let's try a uh, 50 kilohertz. We'll go over to this range. Turn this till we're up around 50. Uh, it's pretty hard to lock in on it with this vernier dial. There's our 50 kilohertz wave. It's kind of a little bit of issue with it there. So yeah, maybe that's just a little bit. Let's try 20 kilohertz. Yeah, that high range I don't know about. But I think we can do 8 kilohertz. There we go. Well, let's go back down to uh, 400 hertz. Alright, vertical gains working. Horizontal gain is working. Vertical attenuator works. Let's see how the uh, external horizontal input works. Let's switch it down to external. 
So I have that one doing, I have uh, channel one doing 400 hertz. Let's go to channel two. Let's set it to 400 hertz as well. 400 hertz. Now if we adjust the phasing, there, see we can get our list of Jew patterns, 90 degrees should give us a perfect uh, circle, if we adjust our gains properly. Oh, alright, nice. Oops. There is a frequency 800 hertz. Yeah, so that's cool. Generating Alyssa Jew patterns from the uh, frequency generator. I think we pretty much put this thing through its paces. Okay, so I've got the. Uh, the ICO 430 oscilloscope hooked up to my ICO 369 um, RF sweep generator. Uh, down here you can't quite see it, but there's something called a uh, broadband detector. That's a test circuit from the uh, ICO manual for the sweep generator that sets up a flat response curve for testing the equipment. Um, here, let me tweak the vertical position a little bit. Yeah, so what we should see is a couple of perfectly parallel lines on here if everything is working right. It's a little, it got a little bit of a tilt to it. Maybe there's a maybe there's a pot in there someplace that can correct that tilt. I'm not quite sure. Um, so what you see here on this display is the bottom line is uh, is the response from the uh, from the broadband detector. It's a flat response curve. Um, over here it blanks. And then it resets this uh, curve back here is the uh, reset sweep on the uh, the RF generator, and this blip right here in the middle is the uh, the marker oscillator. So you can see the marker is set to approximately 10.7 megahertz. So I was last using this to tune a radio. So if you you move this. Um, these are lower frequencies on this side, higher frequencies on that side. So there, that's 9 megahertz. You can see I've moved the marker over to 9. Going all the way over to the edge, it's about 8.2 megahertz. So you can see we've got the sweep generator sweeping from 8.2 to about 13.8. And the middle of it is uh, somewhere around 10.7. So yeah, that's that's kind of nice. This uh, equipment is all working uh, relatively well together. And we can control the size of the uh, the marker on there, you know, from very small to very big. Now let me just zoom in on the the display. Come a little bit closer. There, so now you can see the display that it produces really well. Again, uh, bottom line is the output from the broadband detector. That would be our circuit under test. Top line is the uh, reset line. Over here we have the uh, blanking switches on, um, sweeps back, and then uh, turns the oscillator back on and sweeps forward again. And here you can see me moving the, uh, the marker around. And adjusting marker size there I've got the marker back to about 10.7 uh, yeah so uh, working working pretty well this is actually the reason I wanted this little scope is for doing radio alignments and I think it's I think it's going to do pretty good for that let's do a quick mini teardown of the ICO 430 oscilloscope um, start from the front. I took the case off. There was just two screws holding the case on. 
Over on this side, we can see here's the, uh, these are the horizontal amplifier. Um, this is an astigmatism control. There's a big uh, tin can uh, quad electrolytic uh, main capacitor. I've already checked the voltages on those and they're all good. So uh, surprisingly, that capacitor is uh, still working. Um, these are 12 AU7 tubes here. They seem to be uh, quite popular. This thing's got about three of them in it. Here we have a 0A2. Never seen one of those before. Um, see the CRT in the middle. Let's rotate it around. More tubes throughout. This one back here is a 1V2. Over here we have a 6X4. I believe this big fat one here is a 6D10. Uh, this one here is another 12AU7. It's actually been replaced, maybe. It looks, uh, it's got the uh, European markings on it, ECC82. And over here is a 6BL8. Uh, um, back here we've got some jacks that let you connect to the, uh, the plates directly. Um, let's take a look at the underside. So we can see there's a big transformer there. Um, yeah, there's a couple more electrolytic capacitors. You know, that one there, one would be a bit suspect of. Uh, this one here I just replaced. That was the uh, fault with the horizontal amplifier. I'll have to look and see what those are back there. Maybe some kind of line filtering. It'd be nice to put, uh, to redo this with a modern uh, line input filter on it. Lots of old resistors. Let's get a view so you can see the back of the, uh, here's the binding posts. They did actually use a piece of shielded cable in there for something. Um, here's another old electrolytic that one may be a uh, suspect of. So yeah, that's at least three, three, two or three more old electrolytics I'm going to have to uh, get rid of at some point. This uh, wire round resistor here that looks a bit, looks a bit modern to me. So maybe that uh, that's been replaced. whole thing is very dusty throughout. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.